it started with small things. Your roommate, Hannah, getting up in the middle of the night to grab a glass of water or use the bathroom. You'd hear footsteps shuffling around the apartment, but it wasn't anything strange at first. Everyone gets up in the middle of the night sometimes, but then her nightly wanderings became more frequent. One night, you woke up to the sound of her pacing in the hallway outside your bedroom. The sound of her bare feet on the floor was slow, methodical, as though she was walking in circles. You checked the clock, 3.32 a.m. Groggily, you called out, Hannah, you okay? No answer. Annoyed, you got up, opened the door, and found her standing there in the middle of the hallway, staring straight ahead. Her eyes were open but glazed over, like she was asleep with her eyes open. You called her name again, but she didn't respond. She just turned and walked back toward her room in that same slow, robotic way. You chalked it up to sleepwalking. When you brought it up the next morning, she laughed it off. I've never sleepwalked before, she said, shrugging it off as a fluke. I must have just been stressed or something. But the next night, it happened again. This time, you found her in the kitchen, standing in front of the sink, staring out the window into the dark backyard. When you spoke to her, she didn't react. She just stood there, hands resting on the counter, her eyes vacant. You guided her back to her room, trying to shake off that eerie feeling that clung to you long after you crawled back into bed. The nights went on like this. Each time, she seemed to walk a little longer, wander a little farther. You found her in the living room, in the bathroom, once even standing by the front door, her hand on the doorknob as if she was about to leave. But it was the way she moved that unsettled you the most, so slow, so deliberate, like she was searching for something. One night, you heard her again, this time at the foot of your bed. Your eyes snapped open, and there she was, standing in the darkness, watching you. Her face was blank, her eyes open but seeing nothing. A chill ran down your spine, and you had to suppress the urge to scream. You sat up slowly, whispering her name, but she didn't respond. She just turned and left the room, walking back down the hallway like nothing had happened. The next morning, you confronted her about it. Hannah, you were in my room last night, you said, trying to keep your voice steady. Do you remember? She frowned, shaking her head. I don't remember anything. I must have been sleepwalking again. But there was something in her expression, a flicker of doubt, of unease. She wasn't laughing it off anymore. She was just as disturbed by it as you were. That night, you decided to stay up and keep watch. You sat in the living room, lights off, waiting for Hannah to start her nightly wandering. The apartment was quiet, the only sound the ticking of the clock on the wall. You told yourself it was just a phase, something she'd snap out of eventually. But deep down, you couldn't shake this feeling that something was wrong, very wrong. It was almost 3 a.m. when you heard it, the soft creak of her bedroom door opening. You watched from your seat as Hannah stepped into the hallway, moving with the same slow, deliberate pace. But this time, something was different. She wasn't just wandering aimlessly. She was walking with purpose, heading towards the front door. You stood up, calling her name softly. Hannah? She didn't stop. She reached the door, her hand curling around the doorknob. Before you could stop her, she turned the knob and opened the door. The cold night air rushed into the apartment, sending a shiver down your spine. You hurried toward her, grabbing her arm gently but firmly. Hannah, you can't go outside, you said, trying to guide her back inside. But she didn't budge. She stared straight ahead, as if she couldn't hear you, as if you weren't even there. You felt a growing panic as she pulled away from you, stepping over the threshold and into the yard. Where are you going? You whispered, more to yourself than to her. She didn't answer, of course. She just kept walking. You followed her, unsure of what else to do, your bare feet crunching on the gravel as she made her way down the driveway and out into the street. And then she stopped. In the middle of the road, under the dim glow of a street lamp, she stood still, staring off into the distance. You hurried to catch up, grabbing her by the shoulders and shaking her gently. Hannah, snap out of it. For a moment, she blinked, 
Her eyes fluttering as she was waking up from a deep sleep. She looked around, confused, her breath coming in shallow gasps. What? Where am I? She muttered, her voice shaky. You were sleepwalking again, you said, your voice tight with concern. I followed you out here. You were going to leave the house. She stared at you, wide-eyed, the realization slowly dawning on her. She was terrified, just like you. Together, you walked back to the house in silence, both of you shaken by what had happened. But as you climbed the stairs to your apartment, you couldn't help but glance back over your shoulder. Something about this didn't feel right. It wasn't just sleepwalking anymore. It felt like she was being pulled, like something was leading her. That night, you locked all the doors, double-checked the windows, and lay in bed, waiting for the sound of her footsteps. You told yourself it wouldn't happen again, that maybe this was the last time. But when 3 a.m. rolled around, you heard it again, her door creaking open, her soft footsteps padding down the hall. You held your breath, your heart pounding in your chest, and then the footsteps stopped right outside your bedroom door. You waited for her to leave, to go back to her room like she always did, but she didn't. She stood there, motionless. You could hear her breathing, slow and steady, just inches away from you. And then, slowly, the door began to open. When the door creaked wide enough, you saw her standing there, eyes open, staring straight ahead. But this time, something was different. Her eyes weren't blank anymore. There was something behind them, something dark, something aware. She smiled. And in that moment, you realized it wasn't Hannah anymore.